Hello and welcome to another comedian's interview for my blog and podcast, A Rich Comic Life. My name is Richard Gill and my blog describes my experiences of watching well over 1,000 comedians for nearly 50 years. I'm delighted to welcome my guest today. It's the comedian James Townsend. Yay! Hey, hello. Yes. Hello, Woo. man. Hello, Richard. How are you? You all right? Yeah, I'm good. I'm very good. How are you? I'm absolutely fine, mate. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, uh, it's going to be an interview about your comedy career lasting about 45 minutes to an hour. And uh, I'd like to kick off by uh, asking you, how did you become a comedian in the first place? Uh, well, um, I, I just really enjoy making people laugh, you know, uh, school, everything. And I always had it in the back of my mind. Uh, and about, I'd probably say about 10 years ago, I'd done a little, I'd done a three day course. It was Shakespearean acting and comedy over right. three days, right? And then, um, on the Friday, and I was the only person who was there for the comedy. A lot of people were there for it. It was like a confidence sort of thing that yeah. makes it public speaking. And then um, I, and then the guy said to me on the Friday, "I've been running a, a six week workshop. Do you want to do? Do, do you want to do it on the Sunday?" And I've done a couple of gigs, uh, but I just didn't really have the momentum. And then um, twenty twenty one, I was like. It was always in the back of my mind, like, will you be any good? And I've done Logan Murray's course, which yeah. was six weeks, 10 weeks, something like that. And uh, yeah, just started from there. So I've been going since about, since June 2021 properly. Uh, I love it. It's hard. It's a hard yeah, thing. It's a weird way to spend your time, but it's, it's great, you know. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I just I, I just enjoy making people laugh, and I think I genuinely feel it's the only thing that I'm, I'm any good at is is making people laugh. So, you know, it's it's great to do. Well, you're very good at it, mate. When we saw you, we were we, I was crying with laughter at you. You're 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 a you're a very unique talent, which is great to see. You know, um, so uh, keep doing what you do. Um, sure, when you when you first started, then. Uh, were you, did you start off by going in, in pubs and doing five minute spots and taking friends along and that sort of thing? Oh yeah. And um, I, I still do some of those sort of gigs. Um, but it's, you know, there's still a lot of the pub things, but what, what I did when I, when I started properly, I was like, I need to run a night as well right. so that I have a reason to have to keep doing it. And I found a pub near me uh, upstairs. They've been great. It's the Crown Tavern in Lee. Uh, and yeah, but I mean, like like most comedians early on, I'll, if if you if you set up a gig on a street corner, I'd be there. You know, <laughs> I am I, I I am that man, that friend who goes along and supports you all. First off, and um, the, uh, where where I used to work, I used to work in a school. And uh, the the history te the head of history came in one day and he said he said I want to be a stand up comedian will you come and be in the front row for the first ten gigs that I do and of course I went I was so enthusiastic for him to yeah. <laughs> to do it but I got oh again we have to laugh in the right places and all the rest of it but the memento that he built up. And he flew with it. And, and it, I say to a lot of the comedians I interview, it's all about the experience, I can imagine. The more you do, the better you get at it. Oh, 100%. Like, it's, it's, I have a lot of conversations with people where they're like, oh, I'll, I'll pictures, the gigs, you know, I'd rather do five minutes once a week, uh, yeah. I, I don't know, up the creek or something, than, you know, six days in a week uh, above a pub. But I'm like, you're someone said to me ages ago like you can't expect to play the o2 unless you've played in front of one person in a pub many times you know so it's um yeah and it's it's got gaining gaining that experience gaining that confidence to to be in that situation because you, you could play the same room on a monday and a tuesday and have a two completely different sets same joke to everything and have a completely different response and it's that yeah. thing on your feet i find uh, it's, oh yeah, it's all about experience, the amount of time you've got on it. And a lot of people say, oh, how many gigs you've got done or how, how long have you been going? But someone could be going for 10 years 
and only do 10 gigs, you know. So it's, I just think, get, get as much time under your belt as possible. Um, just I, had a, I, I had a go at it once. I um, uh, wanted to get it out of my system, and uh, I knew a promoter. This, this story is infamous. I knew a promoter years ago, and he said to me, um, I said, I said, I want to have a go at stand-up comedy. He said, he said, right. He said, I've got, I've got a gong show, which is the worst thing you yeah. could possibly do. And I went in, and I had this script ready. It was really good. He said, right. He said, you've got up to three minutes, and they might gong you off. And there was three old fellas sitting in the back, and I walked out. And I said, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. People think I look like Eddie the Eagle Edwards, but I can't see the resemblance myself. And of course, I'm his double. And an old fellow at the back just went, hock off. <laughs> <laughs> and the promoter said, have another go. And I thought, I, I, I think my uh, 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 vision is in the, in the crowd watching you all. I said, never say never again. But so you've got my utmost respect. That's what I'm trying to say for going out there. And if nothing else, having a go, because mm. it must be the most amazing experience once you get laughs yeah. but but you must think how do i approach it this time how do you approach it this time or do you have the same mentality as you go along do, do you have the same procedure um you're only as good as your last gig right but the only one that matters is the next one right you know what i mean so it's you, you you've got to get that momentum but as i say every room is different even if you're doing the same set so it's like you kind of you just re refresh, and it's it, it, it's funny how the you know the universe works in the sense uh, when you've had or it, in the rare occasion where I have a couple of good gigs on the trot, I will have one that will bring me back to earth, and I think that is by far the most important thing because it's like not every not every joke's going to land. You have to and you have to constantly be reassessing. And um, and yeah, and you you never you, you never know how it's going to go. I mean, I I done a gong show once. Uh, there was it was up the creek, and there was maybe ten people in the audience, three of them that I'd brought, and I nailed it right. Uh, but they kept saying, they kept saying, there's one last act coming, um, but he's having issues getting here. So that's always in the back of my mind. I'm thinking, do you know what? Actually, I think I've got this. I think I'm going to win tonight. And you get a five-minute spot on a Friday or Saturday or something like that. And they went, and like right at the end, and like my, my girlfriend at the time was going, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the double doors have opened. And they went, oh, I'm the last act. And this guy has walked through the door, and he was a quadriplegic. And he was being brought in by his nurse. Oh my walked God. up onto the stage, and everyone's just. And he goes, "Knock, knock. Who's there?" He went, "I don't know. I can't get to the door." And I was like, <laughs> "What an amazing joke!" Yeah, right. And I just thought, "He's done me. He's done me." To, to, never... to break whatever barriers there. Yeah, in that one line, fantastic. Yeah, just bang, done. Yeah. And he kept doing callbacks to it. Yeah. And I thought, you can't, you, you just never know what's going to come on. And I mean, that, that can work two ways. You can, you can go on stage and have a good set and then, the, or, or, or be going up after someone who's, who's killed it and be like, I'm not going to be as good as them. But you can ride that wave. If you do it. it's, so, it's so true what you say, because um, uh, I think, I think, uh, well, I guess that um, you have to have bad uh, shows to become a better comedian because again it's all experience yeah yeah and, and the thing is if you, you go have along. good gigs consistently yeah the day you have a bad one you you won't know how to deal with it yeah 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 so yeah it's, pretty much so it's it, it, it's weird it's like anything in life you know yeah. You, yeah, yeah. you learn from your mistakes you, you learn from the things that go wrong and I think it's important I mean it's hard it's yeah. hard especially in the early days because you're, you're like I'd say the first year of doing this I didn't sleep because a good a good gig that adrenaline's going. Yes, yeah, a, yeah. A bad gig, you're thinking everyone hates me. That like you know what do I need to change? So it, it takes a while to get through that. You just but, have to find a way of keep going, keeping yeah. going, and and yeah, yeah. forget about the bad ones. Move on. Keep going. Tomorrow is a new day. Learn from your mistakes. Move on. 
and and gradually it comes on. Um, when you're on stage, what do you like to talk about? Do you have any specific themes? Oh, nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, a, that's what I love. <laughs> yeah, just, and that's why I mean, me and because I've, I've I've got the video of the night that uh, at Sofa So Funny, which is a great, great one. Gig. Oh, yeah, yeah, and. Um, a lot of it's just me and you interacting and making each other laugh. And it was it was so silly because I was talking about what's your favourite mythical creature? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Such a good the, performance. The, <laughs> yeah, and just and just stupid stuff because stuff can get quite heavy. And I've I've been to gigs and I'm you know this isn't me knocking political comedians or anything because because I, lo I love it all. I love all yeah, comedy. Yeah. But sometimes you sort of think. Oh, I don't want to think about the outside world now. So it's yeah, just, yeah. I, I do things that, that make me laugh. And it, I like the, you know, the, the, just the silliness of, yeah. of everything. So it's, and I find whenever I do write political stuff, it gets very heavy, very, very quickly. <laughs> and sort of, yeah. So it's, I, I, I try and make it so that people don't know what direction it's going to go because I feel like walking on stage often people you know and know who you are people immediately yeah. they see you and make their mind up in your head and I like to keep people guessing you know that's that's uh, that's wonderful because um you are very very original and that's what stood out you never knew what you were going to get next and I love comedians like that the two that come to mind we see every year at Edinburgh Jason Byrne he's just incredible because yeah. you never know what's going to happen next but I remember in the 90s, I saw um, Reeves and Mortimer on tour, the, on Big Night Out on tour. And that, when it first came on Channel 4, it was like you couldn't help but watch it because you never knew what was going to happen next. And, and with the live gig, the character of Les, who was in the first series, the bold scientist with the white coat, he appeared and the place went ballistic and he had to climb up on a ladder. This is on a stage. And and uh, with a fishing rod, uh, fish for loaves of bread. And if, <laughs> and if, you, got, if you got one, the place went through the roof. And I thought, this is extraordinary. And and yeah. the originality of that was just incredible. So that's uh, what I admire about you. You know, you never know what you're going to get next with your act. And when you said to me, for example, what's your mythical creature? It was like, well, this is left field, but you carry on and you keep it going. You know, it's fantastic. So uh, good. Yeah, yeah I, I, I just like, I like that randomness. I mean, like, yeah. like the, and I think, I think that's a very British style. I mean, you look at, you know, the Monty Python or like the Mighty Boosh and yeah. stuff like that. And it's just so random. Love it. Love it. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, it leads me on to my next question. Uh, do you have any sort of writing process <laughs> for a routine or a show? You must have some idea what you're going to do. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I talk to myself a lot. Um, and I will... So I've written prolifically since I was a kid, and I'll write... I'll jump down. Honestly, Richard, I've got piles of notebooks of just... <laughs> utter nonsense just around the, you know, and then like notes on my phone so I'll be walking down the street I think of something and then I might come back to it but I'll I'll talk to myself and if something makes me laugh it will be in my head and then I will you know I'll, I'll what I do I have a microphone set up and I'll stand in the mirror and I'll talk about it and I'll record it and then it will it will build or I'll I, you know, I might drop it into conversation at work yeah. or whatever and see if see if it works. So I mean the a process I could be walking back from the station and then I'll come back with an idea that I'll flesh out, but then I might not have an idea for six weeks. So it's and then going up on stage, but I I'll, I'll have the, the sets I'll organize. Um I will have you know a couple ready, but then I might I I've tried to get myself into a position that once I go up on stage and I've got a feel of the crowd, I'll know what they like. So if no one's told a story, I'll be like, okay, cool. I've got the story of the time of this yeah. occasion. Yeah. Um, you know, so I like to have a couple of different things. So I, I like the buzz of going up and being like, I'm not hundred percent sure what I'm going to say. <laughs> you know what I mean, so I remember. That's the that, excitement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's fun. And I, I think it's, it's very easy to get up on stage 
and the people are aware that what you're saying is rehearsed and that just breaks the whole illusion. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, um, it, uh, it's interesting about recording ideas on mobile phones because um, uh, recently we saw Mark Watson and he does a similar thing, but he just puts a line in and he, he goes back to his phone and he goes, he goes, what was that again? I, I, I forget this. But it obviously triggered something that yeah. turned into a routine. And the other classic one is um, Peter Kay. That's how he used to yeah. get all his characters. He used to record everything in his family or his, or his friends and everything. And all the characters would just come into place. And it's, it's, yeah. it, it, it's, it's an extraordinary way of doing it. Um, what do you think makes a good comedian? It's a, it's a tough question, that. <laughs> you gotta, you, well, you, you, you've got to have fun on stage. Yeah. And I, think, I don't think there's, you know, a recipe for it because there's so many comics. So, and everyone's got their own little flair. But I think if you're enjoying yourself, it's the same as like a DJ. If a DJ's playing the music that they love, yeah. or you know, and anyone who's doing something that they love, people are going to feed off of it. I mean, because so, some of my jokes on paper, they're not funny. <laughs> it's like, a, it's, you know, do you know what I mean? It's but it's the performance and it's, it's the delivery. The, it's yeah, the and the the interaction, yeah. looking at someone and and saying something like, "I saw." Uh, do you know Doctor Brown? The, Very much so. Yeah. Um, um, so I saw him do the beginning of his work in progress, uh, whatever it is he's touring at the moment. And he, this was, this was brilliant, right? He, he got, just got a newspaper and he got someone to read out a news article. He just opened the paper and he just pointed at it. And the, and it was something really dark. It was about like the war or something. It was something really just, but it was the fact that this guy didn't know how to say it. He's like, I don't really want to read it. And there was so much tension that had been built that when he said it, I laughed so loud, I couldn't laugh <laughs> the rest of the thing because I was embarrassed, you know. And I think it's, uh, yeah, I think if you know that you've got, if you're having fun, then that starts that electricity. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Very much so. then, yeah. I, think, I think because I've seen so many of the years, um, if you're very warm and endearing and enjoying it and above all funny if if if, if you have a killer <coughs> excuse me first line mm. then um you're away um, yeah. and, and 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 the trick is to get the audience on your side as quickly as possible and then you can practically say and do what you want yeah, totally. I, yeah. I, I don't know uh, you know Steve Martin oh well, um, he's one of my favorites. And he, he, he did a masterclass. I don't know if you've okay. seen any masterclass things. And um, the lesson one was come out and say say something stupid. That, that's your chance. You know, yeah. don't come out and go, oh, hey, guys, what's going on? Just say the most ridiculous thing you can do. And then it cut to a video. And he's standing there with a the ukulele <laughs> and like, the spinny things. And he goes like, oh, I hope I'm funny or something like that. And it's just... You know, and and he did one of the best. One, he is fantastic. He's, I've I've got all the books behind me are all um, comedy biographies, and nice. his his book uh, Born Standing Up is incredible. I had I had a chance to see him, uh, which I which I took at the Hammersmith Apollo, and he was on with his bluegrass band. And, okay, and they were very good, and he was there with his banjo. But at the end of it, for the encore, he came on with the arrow in the head, and he did the end the um. Uh, the, the Egyptian dance, which he made famous when he used to do live gigs in America, and the whole place just erupted. And they said, "Well, he's still here, you know. The the clown yeah. is still there." And it, he he is he's always been one of my favourites. I I loved the um, films with Carl Reiner. He, he did a run of about ten of them, which were just crazy and banal, and again off the wall. And that, that's the that's the magic of it. Um, how do you cope with any nerves before you go on stage? Do you get nervous at all? Uh, yeah, uh, it's less. It's less now, uh, but you do still get nervous every time. Yeah. Uh, just do a couple of deep breaths. I've got like a, a thing that I do with my hands and like a sort of, like little meditation sort of thing, little ritual. 
Uh, yeah. I, th- yeah. I think it's important to have a moment where you go from work, James, to stand up, James. Yeah. Rather than, you know, just walking off the street, getting on stage. So I have to, I have to have like a little transition moment. Uh, sometimes I'll go through my lines beforehand, uh, especially if I've written bits on the day. But generally speaking, I try and calm down and yeah, just take a minute to myself and then mm-hmm. and then enjoy the comedy so that you can get a feel of where the, the night's going. Because if, yeah, yeah. if it's a bad night or a particularly good night, you've got to try and find, you, you, you've got to tap into that rhythm, you know. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I don't touch wood. I don't really get as nervous anymore unless it's either a place that I've not done or it's a big one. You, do, do, do you see what I mean? There's, Very much so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Would you would you say that uh, as soon as you speak into the microphone, the nerves go? Um, or is it the first yeah. laugh from the audience? Yeah, I mean, I've had it before where I've been on stage and I've looked at my hand and it's going like this. Wow. But I've felt the nerves at all. So it's because you've got that adrenaline. I would... You know, I mean, I, I I feel that it is very much my happy place. Being yes, honest. very much. And it's, it, it's, it's, it's just, yeah. So, I, I, yeah, I'd say that, like, I'm now the adrenaline I can deal with and it, and it pushes you, you know. Uh, but I've, I have had it before when I've sort of, yeah, I've looked down and I've been like, oh, wait a minute, am I nervous? What's going on? But you can't get in your head about it, you know. Um but yeah, I mean, it depends. I mean, some some I've done backyard comedy for the first yeah. time uh, about a month ago, and I died on my ass. Like uh, I just and I know the people went on it, but I was like, just keep going because at least you're finding this funny, you know. Uh, <laughs> and I did. I mean, it, it wasn't easy. You know, had me in the audience. I'd have been making them up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got a lot of time for people who sit in the front row. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I don't know where I get that from, but clearly I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how do you remember all your routines? Do you have a way of remembering them all? Do you have pointers in your head where things are going to go? Um, I really struggle with it. So I, right. would, I would like to be a one-liner comedian. Right. I, I haven't got the memory for it. I lose my place. Uh, and I did, I've i done several gigs where I've stumbled with that and I've ended up having to have a notebook or the words on my hands, which I think, again, breaks the illusion. And I, I don't like doing that. I stopped, I stopped doing that some time ago. Mm-hmm. But um, so often the, the things that I tell, the stories that I tell, will be something that has actually happened to me. Like genuinely, I did have a spider that was following me and that was the set. So it's, you know, I'm, you know, I'm talking about my experiences, but then I'll blend it in with some of the jokes. So it's hot, um, you know, half of it is real how I actually feel. So I've got the memory. Yes. Once you add lib. Uh, but, you know, I, um, some, some, sometimes I have to just stand there and be like, I don't know what I'm going to say, so I'm just going to open my mouth. And uh, I'll tell you what, you, when you've done that and no one laughs, you very quickly remember what you were supposed to say. You get off stage, <laughs> every word is in your head. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I, but I do try and practice a lot at home. I, like I say, I've got a microphone. Yeah, I'll, yeah. Do, I'll go, thing, go through things. But I'm trying to get more into into writing and getting the words spot on. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just not my style. A lot of my style is just shoot from the hip and see what happens. One of the uh, most creative things I ever did, apart from this blog, was write a play, which we put on for Comic Relief. And okay. uh, it's um, called The Applicant. It's, o- it's only half an hour. But it, it's, it's basically uh, about me coming down from Carlisle to London Uh, getting my first ever job so it's a series of interviews and he has uh, 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 he already had a girlfriend who was down here very successful and he went to join her but he never had a he never had an interview in his life so me so I was the interviewee I I was the guy getting all the interviews and my my friend who could do accents played all the interviewers and um, I wrote it as though it was like monologue 
interview monologue interview so i would run in it would be a waiting room and i'd look round and start talking to the audience because i was nervous and that, there's the monologue and yeah. when we came to put this on uh the opening night i forgot the first monologue and i've never <laughs> i was like a rabbit in headlights i was like oh my god and just trying to remember all this and then but as soon as the in the guy playing the interviewer came on we could yeah. bant him and uh, I, I was going to ask you um uh do you think it's similar being a comedian as opposed to being an actor learning words because of course you can spon you can interact with the audience um well, with acting, you've got to, and I mean, I'm, I'm not an actor. I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd be open to it, I'd be up for it, but it's not. So I don't, you know, I don't really know how how the how how it's done with the with, with the prep, but the the get out clause that you've got when you're a comedian because it's so intimate, it's so raw that if you don't know what's going on, you can literally go. What's your favourite mythical creature? Or you've got that. <laughs> Whereas if I'm standing there, you know, in an interview, and then I suddenly turn around and, and point something out, the the other actors can be like, "What are you going on about?" Or it, it breaks that illusion. So it's, you know, you've got there's, there's nothing like stand up. So you do you know what I mean? You've got that. You have got things that you can, or even if you just go, "I've forgotten my lines." I, you know, yeah. oh, this is a, you know, this is a weird room. Look at that, you know, look at these beers or whatever. You've got that uh, escape button, you know. Yeah, as long as as long as they're on your side, you can, as I say, and do anything you like. I can imagine the one the one thing I did do was uh, we did three three performances of it, and the second and third night I was word perfect <laughs> after me. Yeah. But the other thing was. Um, uh, I managed to get his his name in, which was one of the best jokes that I did on the play. I called him uh, Norman Oliver Hope. So if he, when he got all his rejection letters, it was Dear N O Hope, and that always got a laugh. <laughs> no, <laughs> <hope>. <laughs> so that was good. But it was it that was an extraordinary experience for me because, um, as I said, hardly ever been on stage, etc., etc., etc. And and it's it's fascinating when I'm sitting there watching just how I'm, I'm fascinated how you're going to make somebody laugh within a minute or two of being on stage and that's the magic thing and you've got it in buckets because when when we were there i was laughing straight away and it was it was wonderful um let's move on um i'm very fortunate every year to go to the edinburgh fringe it's my holiday so i go for a week or so and uh, I see about 50 shows and by the end of it I need another holiday because I'm exhausted <laughs> um, yeah. but um, uh, tell me have you played Edinburgh have you uh, have you uh, tell me about your experiences of going there or any other fringes or festivals so when uh, last year um, I was I was offered a couple of spots but I went up uh, I, I went up completely as a punter uh, yeah. I, uh, and I saw, so I went up for seven days. Uh, it cost me a fortune. Um, ridiculous. But yeah, it was crazy. But it was it was good. I, um, uh, but basically, I just went to see as many types of show as I would like to see, um, and and then worked out because obviously a lot of them, a lot of them you pay for, but then obviously some you give people what you think it was worth, um, and I. My logic was, if what what am I happy to pay for, and so what would I want to see? Yeah. So I'm I'm intending to go up there this year. I'm just waiting to find out from the PBH free fringe for a week. Um, but yeah, like it was, I I was offered. I didn't really think about it, but when I was offered a couple of spots to do for friends and stuff like that, but it always crossed over with what I saw. And I mean, like one day I saw nine shows. Wow, I mean, <laughs> that's yeah. more than me. <laughs> yeah, I that was, and I, I think four of them were clowns. I think I saw Julian Masley, uh, Viggo Venn, John Luke Roberts, and uh, Sammy Abu Walder in in a day, and the uh train spotting 
to oh, wow. a, yeah, a, yeah. Uh, something else. I mean, by the end of the day, I, I was exhausted, but I came away from that going like, right, what what do I think is is good? What what really made me laugh at those things and seeing like for example two clowns back to back and then two straight stand up comedians back to back like what is it what separated them what yeah you see what, I mean? what, yeah, what very that? Much so, yeah yeah when i, um, when, I yeah. when i go up i uh, always have a spreadsheet there are loads of friends join me yeah. and one uh, and i send it to all of them and i say right i'm going up here and you and they come along there's two friends of mine who come all the time with me uh, for the whole thing but other people come and join me and and i'm exactly like that i'm like a big cross section of different sorts of comedians different plays different music the 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 stuff on offer is extraordinary and yeah. and, and this year in particular um i'm doing more fringes so i'm going i've, I've been to leicester um uh, I'm going to Brighton. I'm going to Hastings as well as Edinburgh. So, and it's 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 fascinating going around the country, seeing mm. how they put them on and and how it all works and everything. And uh, I just I can't get enough of it. I absolutely love it. And uh, um, of course, I should uh, get this laugh trademarked. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's um, who I am. Oh yeah, everyone knows. <laughs> it. Like, it, it's great to see how different people's minds work, yeah. and then how different you, you know from from the crowd perspective and the performance yeah, yeah. different parts of the country di different things you're going to be able to i mean I, i've done i've done a gig in bromley uh the other week where i was comparing uh so bromley in south london and it was what the crowd were looking for compared to literally the week before i'd done one up the road and they were two completely different crowds, you know, and it's just, there's so, yeah. there's so much difference, no, no matter where I, you go. My my home city is Carlisle, and yeah. uh, uh, I, whenever I'm back there, I go and see as much as I can there, because the, the crowds are different. There's a there's a great story about the noise next door, who we, we go quite a lot to see, and... Um, uh, we saw them in London and then we saw them in Carlisle. And when I saw them, um, my mum uh, was on her, on her last legs and, and, and it was a very tough time for me and my brother. And my brother said, go and see him and cheer, cheer yourself up. So I went there and I'm sitting at the back of the auditorium with a pint of beer in the dark, feeling sorry for myself. And they came on and they said, right, hello, Carlisle. Can anybody give me a song about Carlisle? Is anybody anything good about Carlisle? Somebody yelled out Carlisle United. And then then they said, um, can anybody give me something bad about Carlisle? And some bastard yelled out Richard Gill. <laughs> no they way. Went, they went, they went, I is he here? He's normally in London. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, for God's <laughs> sake. <laughs> Ended up on stage singing with them. They made my night. And Amazing. that's the magic of it, you know, and, and that's that's the beauty of why I do it, because I was in such a low place that it just cheered me up no end. And, and hopefully my enthusiasm and my positiveness and my support for you all mm. shines off through this blog and, and what I do and, 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 and I'll go about it. It's, it's, it's what's not to love. That's what I like to, yeah, to say. Yeah, totally. And I mean, it's it's so... The whole thing is that chemistry and that give and take between the crowd and, and yeah. you anyway. And you'll never, even if you watch something back on Yo of a good set, you'll never be able to get that, that feeling in the air. And yeah. It's, yeah, and like you're there to make someone's night. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. People, people, everyone's got dressed up. And, and that, that, that's why I don't like to have the notes on, on the stage. I want, I want you to feel like everything is being done exactly at that time. Time. And um, because you're out for you're out for a good night, you know, yeah, and yeah. It, just, it just happens that I'm the one holding the microphone because I could be anyone. So yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the one of the reasons why the blog exists is um, uh, I uh, I um, support not only the big comedians but the, but the up and coming ones, and I list every single venue I've ever been to within wow. within each particular act. So I've got an enormous spreadsheet with every single act I've ever seen on over 50 years. And it, it's becoming wow. an archive now because it's, it's just an extraordinary thing. You know, it's, it's, 
I don't know. I don't know how I started it off. It was like um, I'd, 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 I've always been into lists, and I and I and I thought nobody's ever done it from an audience point of view. Nobody can be bothered. <laughs> yeah, but it's but it's just took off. It's just a wonderful. <laughs> um, to date, what has been your comedy highlight? Oh, apart from Ooh. this. <laughs> oh, oh, of course, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, 100%. Well, this is the first podcast I've ever done, so this is actually... Oh, well, thank you, I'm honoured. That's, that's wonderful. Um, I would say probably running my own night. Um, it's been... Because it's been a real... It's been tough to do. Yeah. I couldn't even give a... Uh, you know, like an exact day. But I think I, rem I remember once, it was maybe the second or third one that I'd done. And you're welcome to come down. Uh, one I will night. do, my um, friend, definitely. It's South London, it's yeah. one in Lee. Um, but, and I remember turning to the barmaid who, who was in there and I went, I've done a thing. And she went, Yeah, you have. And it was like, there was like a crowd of maybe 30 people. Uh, really good acts, uh, re real real fun. And everyone was having a good time. And I was at the back and I was taking photos and I sort of, yeah, I felt like I'd actually done something, you know. Yeah, uh, that's and brilliant. Yeah, it, and it, it's, it's a good thing. I mean, running your own it's night is stressful. A uh, sense of achievement though, isn't it? It's, it's, it's really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you do you compare the gigs? Yeah. And, and, you... and, and Go on, sorry. I was just going to say, do you prefer comparing to uh, stand-up routines? Um, it depends on the night. I mean, they're, they're, they're two they're two completely different things. You, yeah. you, you've got the the advantage to comparing is you can try some new stuff. You've got in jokes, and you can build that chemistry, like I was talking about earlier. Like you're you're in charge of guiding everyone through the jungle of the night. You know? yeah. But uh, and if and if a joke's not landing, you can just tap out. So you go, oh, well, let's bring on some real comedians or something, or just yeah. a little thing like that. <laughs> um, and Or you can have an in-joke and you're winding someone up or whatever, and, and that's fun. Um, but then the, you know, being part of a night, you get on stage, you do your bit, and if, you, if you're opening or you're early, you can go and enjoy the rest of your night. So it's... And because it, it's hard not to take, because if you there's a bad night and you're hosting, you're running the night, it's harder to not take that home with you. Do yeah. You yeah. I mean? So, totally, yeah. I couldn't tell you which I prefer, uh, but I'm I'm definitely glad that I compare because uh, I've just had some really really good nights with it. You know? That's brilliant. That's so good. Remind me of the pub again. Oh, uh, it's uh, the Crown Tavern. In Lee, the Crown and, uh, Tavern in Lee. I'm, I'm going to be there this year, drinks. my friend. I'll come amazing. and see you definitely. I'm, amazing. I'll drop. I'll drop you a message on it. But Please do. Like, no, no. no that's that, cool. Really cool. Cool. And 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 following on from that, have you any ambitions as a comedian? Would you like to be on TV? Would you like your own tour? Um, how far do you want to go with it? Uh. Um. What. Well, I got into stand-up because I wanted to write for TV initially. Right. And I mean, I don't know what the climate's going to be like in the next five to 10 years for four sitcoms and stuff like that. Anyway, I don't know if there'll be the appetite in the same way, what we've, you know, but that's, that's what I wanted to do. I mean, my, my, some of my biggest influences are like, uh, Jesse Armstrong, Peep Show, yeah. Mark Iannucci, Steve yeah. Coogan, Larry David, yeah. uh, the list is endless. You know, I uh, sitcoms are more my thing. I mean, Sh Sean Locke, Fifteen Stories Higher. I don't oh, know if it's fantastic. Seen. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. just yeah. So, so good. Like the one with the with the priest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> with the bow, that's it. <laughs> yeah, my, you, you remember? Yeah, it goes into a uh, a Buddhist retreat. They pull the fire along. They're just like, oh, yeah, running off. <laughs> so it's just, it's just brilliant. So, I mean, that is what I would like to do, really. I mean, I'd love to tour, you know, I'd love to do, you know, play the O2 and stuff like that. And that'd be amazing. But, yeah, like, right now, I'm just like, let's try and get a 10 uh, top secret. And then let's, I try, I try not to get too far ahead of myself because, uh, 
I just, I didn't realise how big this world was when I got into it and how much admin there was and how much you had to do and, yeah, you know, yeah. how long it yeah. takes. Like in, because uh, in your head, everything's like, oh yeah, well, I'll do a gig and someone will go, you're the funniest person that's ever existed. <laughs> And next thing you know, you're doing blockbusters, you know. <laughs> it's, just, it's not how the world works. I mean, it's like it's like any <laughs> any job in the sense that, you know, you've got to be you got to be the admin guy before you're the CEO or yeah, whatever. Yeah. So it's yeah, I, I I don't know. I'm I'm open to pretty much anything. And the, the more things have gone on, the more I've been looking at like acting and stuff like that. But I uh, for now, and I, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. And I think well, I wish you I wish you well because you've got a you've got a clear vision of what you want to do, and uh, if you've got any ideas, pursue them. Mm. Certainly in the sitcom because. Um, uh, they they are getting made. Um, I've enjoyed Rose Matafeo's one, Starstruck. I've enjoyed Ian Sterling's one, Buffering. They are getting made. Um, but I love uh, just the other week we watched Phoenix Nights again, and um, uh, the, it 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 was released the same year as The Office, which was equally as good. But The Office got all the plaudits, and you forget. I mean, I mean the. The episode with the family fun day and Sammy the Snake, I was yeah. crying at that. And, and you know, it wasn't even heard of as a stand-up comedian at the time. He'd just written this thing, got a group of friends together, and that's how you do it. That's, that's, that, that's how you do it. I wish you so much uh, goodwill with it because, um, you know, your, your originality in the, in the 10, 20 minutes I saw, I thought this guy is good and he, he's got a lot of ideas and if you're going to try and develop them then good luck to you um yeah. how have you found online gigs as opposed to live gigs have you done many of them i've, I've never, never no. done one. No. you've never done one no no i mean have, you, have of... you been to any have you been in the audience for some no, no. I, i've not um i've not viewed any i mean i started doing this you know 2021 when the pandemic yeah. you know was, you just, was taking yeah. off so and it, it to be honest it wouldn't really be my thing it's that yeah. magic in the room that, that i enjoy i mean i yeah. don't know and, and a lot of my stuff as i say is very performance heavy yeah 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 i don't feel that you'd i'd be able to give it my all and the, the other thing is the idea of uh yeah the idea of, of saying a joke and not knowing whether it lands uh <laughs> But I think it's, it's happening more and more. And I think with VR and all the rest of it, those sort of things will happen. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm, I'm not against it, but it's just, it's not really my bag. I like live performances, you know. My my view was um, when the pandemic hit, uh, um, I I needed my comedy fix. And, and there, yeah. were, there was some very good ones around. There was, there was Always Be Comedy. There was Jarleth Regan's. Irishman Abroad, there was Sean James' Happy Mondays, and I enjoyed them, but by God, I was so pleased when live comedy came back, because as you say, I, I, I love to go out with some friends on a Friday or a Saturday night, um, have a few drinks, and then sit there and say, right, entertain me, and you're yeah. in the moment, you never know what's going to happen in that room. And it's extraordinary that, and and especially your style of comedy because it's performance driven. Mm. You just never know what you're gonna happen. Next. I I always remember we were at headliners and we went to see um, Ricky Grover was on the bill, and um, there was some uh, difficulty in the audience. There was some hecklers and it, it was horrible. And he stopped the show. He jumped down and he physically threw them out. <laughs> and then, and, yeah, he did, and then and then and then he came back on to the theme from the Rocky <laughs> film series because he's an ex-boxer, and yeah. everybody was like, "Yeah," and it just elevated his performance. And I thought this is extraordinary to be at that point in the room. It yeah. just made for the night, and that's the magic of it. Live yeah. performance is just the best thing. Okay. And yeah, you never know what you're going to expect. There's always something, there's always a story. And uh, they say, yeah, uh, you never cross the same stream twice. Yeah. So, like, yeah, yeah. See, yeah, that that will never happen again. Even if he kicked other people out. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's not the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah. Who are your favorite comedians, past and present? Oh, Did you have comedy growing up? 
Uh, yeah, I used to watch Tommy Cooper with, with my granddad. Oh my God. And I mean, Tommy Cooper's like <laughs> the man, you know. Uh, and I, I remember some of my earliest memories watching Tommy Cooper with him. Wow, wow, wow. And and he was, my, my granddad was my best friend when I was little, you know, and it- That's wonderful. And that, that thing, and I'm looking back at it, I was probably laughing just because he was laughing, like I didn't get the thing. But the thing is that his sort of humour, you know, pull yourself together, like, you know, fill up a pair of curtains, Universal. magic tricks going on. Yeah, so you can be six or you can be 96 mm. and it's still just as funny. Uh, and then I'd say a little bit older, I got into Monty Python, yeah. um, Alan Partridge, yeah. uh, you know, Steve, Steve Coogan. is He's just, brilliant. And I, I saw him. Did you see the tour that he did last year? Of um, I didn't see last year's. I'm, I, 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 I'm, we saw we saw the man who thinks he's it in 1998 when Alan Partridge was very big and he was yeah. fantastic. Just and there was there was no fat. There was no. Yeah. He didn't trip on any of his lines. I mean, he's yeah. an ultra professional. professional. No, he, was, he was superb. He was he, right. he was fantastic. Honest, uh, I just there there is something incredible. Uh, how efficient his jokes are, and I mean, yeah. the, discovering him, I end up finding you know, Armando Inucci, uh, Chris Morris, and all the rest yeah. of this. Stuff. Yeah, I mean, straight stand up now, I'd say, is you know, Jimmy Jimmy Carr. I've must have seen Jimmy Carr five or six times. I actually met Jimmy Carr twice in the same night. I, I oh, killed really? his autograph, <laughs> and then he got on the wrong train platform. <laughs> And I, I was like, oh my God, it's Jimmy Carr, Jimmy Carr. And then I said, like, I'm, I hate to do this. It's like midnight. I was like, I hate to do this. Can I get a picture? And I got, I have the weirdest picture, right? He's, he went like this. Uh, uh, <laughs> and then he's like, he's like that, yeah. And then, so I've copied him. And, <laughs> and I look at it now and I'm just like. What was I doing? <laughs> yeah, what? You know. But he he was great. I mean, That's I saw really him. Was, I mean, the, well, so that, that must have been fifteen years ago. And then I saw him at the beginning of last year or the end of last year. Um, who else? Uh, Ross Noble. Yeah. Sean Lock. Yeah. Sean Lock is. God bless him. Yeah, one of the best. He's one of the best. I know, Bill Hicks. Oh. God I, bless him. One of the best. I remember buying one night stand on DVD from. HMV or something when I was maybe 13, 14. And obviously I'd seen proper stand-up like Richard Pryor and yeah. stuff like that growing up. Uh, Jasper Carrot on the TV yeah. every Saturday. And then, uh, and I watched him and I was like, he's not doing stand-up. He is holding a mirror up to just like all the bullshit. Yeah. And I was like, I've never seen anything like this. The, 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 the deal, the deal with it was the deal with it was he could say what he likes, yeah. and 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 it was how far could they? Well, not far. How far could he go? But how far could it be broadcastable or whatever? Yeah. You know, and 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 um, all the comedians that you've mentioned, I've seen live. Um, yeah. Tommy Tommy Cooper was the second act I ever saw live. In, wow. in, in in 1974, when I was seven, I saw Les Dawson on Holiday, who was just incredible. And then the year later, we saw Tommy Cooper. And on stage, the, st the curtains opened up, and he's lying on a bed, and there's <laughs> nothing else happening, and there's one woman in the crowd crying with laughter. And he trickles <laughs> round, he doesn't do a thing. And after about five minutes, he pops his head up and he goes, what, what, somebody come on. <laughs> and he was away. <laughs> it was just incredible. The hat sketch where he's got someone feeding him hats through his legs. And yeah. The policeman did this and the sailor did that. And then the, the bloke's hand comes through his trousers and he goes, I don't know what that's doing there. <laughs> he was phenomenal. Yeah, um, and it's timeless um, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, um, I saw Bill Hicks live in Manchester. He came on at midnight and he did 90 minutes. And yeah. we were all exhausted because it was midnight, but we were like that. We were just transfixed by yeah. what he had to say. And, I mean, my God, he 
he was truthful, he was honest, he was hysterical in his stories, and uh, I, I'm a massive, massive fan of him. Um, the first comedy store bill I ever saw was, um, when I came down to London, was Richard Morton, uh, Linda Smith, God bless her, um, uh, and uh, someone called Charles Fleischer, who was never heard of again. He was a very unique uh, comedian, very much like yourself, very original. And he went off, he was never seen again, but he went off to voice Roger Rabbit in Hollywood, and that's why he was never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> and it's wow. extraordinary how, how all these comedians develop. Uh, one of the reasons for the blog is watching them all develop. Um, yeah. A highlight was a Harry Hill for me. I absolutely love Harry Hill. Oh, and I saw, him, I saw him 30 years ago uh, downstairs at the King's Head before he was famous and he was late for the show. To, to this day, the best opening line I've ever heard for a set. He brushed past me, jumped up onto the stage. He said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really sorry I'm late. I had to have a testicle brought down. And everybody, he thought, <laughs> everybody laughed and then he went from Derby. <laughs> And everybody just went, what? Yeah. <laughs> when, I, when, I finally, when I met him about five years ago, I told him this, went, Rich, he said, I still tell that. <laughs> oh, why? See, that's, that, that's the thing. You, that's you incredible. Do, yeah. You, you, there's somewhere in your brain, obviously, we remember experiences, whatever, but like there is something in your brain where you kind of catalogue. Yeah. And then, yeah. and I've had it before, which is weird, especially because you know I'm, I'm I'm no one. I've just started, but I've had it before where people come up to me, but not. Oh, I saw you at da da da, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that. And then the filing cabinet <laughs> opens. I'm like, oh, that was the night that someone did this, or yeah, 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 yeah. Very and, recent, and, and, and I changed it a little bit, and and it's just. And, and knowing that someone's had a good night is yeah. it, it's great, but then also like you just like where do I even remember that? Because I mean, some gigs you never ever want to remember ever again, <laughs> but they they're burned into your skull. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it's, I'm yeah, better than this. <laughs> there's uh, yeah, good memories, great memories. Following following on from that, um, like me, do you go to a lot of comedy shows as a member of the audience? Um, not as many as I would like. Uh, you know, I've done a lot of the bringer in and stuff like that. You know, you've got to be a plus one for people's shows, which has been, I don't mind because it means I don't have to worry about doing myself. I can enjoy everyone's night. I can have a drink and yeah. it's fun. Yeah. Uh, but at the moment, I'm just trying to gig as much as I can. I mean, I, or... Um, or I'll be going, if I'm going to a show, I'll be going to see a friend specifically. Yeah, yeah. I don't see as much comedy as I, as I would like, yeah. but I've, even yesterday I said, that I'm meeting up with a friend of mine from school uh, and he was like, what do you want to do on Friday? I was like, I've got tickets to a show because my friends are, are there. And I, and I was like, and I told him, gave him all the details. I was like, I'm really sorry that it's always comedy. And he's like, no, I don't, I don't mind. He, you know, but, I, I get that a lot. <laughs> but but they love it. It's good. And, and I don't get to see half the shows that I would like to because I'm gigging or, or, or whatever. I'm not going to be able to get there. I mean, I, I'd love to just, yeah. you know, I'd, 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 it would be perfect if all of the shows I went to see started at midnight. So yeah, I could, yeah. um, you know. Um, if, you're, yeah. if you're on a bill, yeah. would you stay and watch the other acts? Yeah, ninety nine point nine percent of the time. Unless yeah. I have to go, yeah, you know, I'm in the middle of nowhere, or or you know, I've got a prior engagement. Uh, but yeah, hundred percent. Like I will do my best to be there till the end and just see because it's fun. Like I'm not. Yeah. Like, I do this because it's funny, and everyone else is funny, you know. And it's and, and half the time your mates are on stage. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is, if you've got someone that you started at the same time with, you can do. You, they, you can say, oh, I liked how you changed that. Or you, yeah. you can be honest, or they can go, Jesus, how, you know, that was <laughs> awful. And then, and you've got that little bonding thing. So, yeah, if I, if I can, uh, and most of the time I can, yeah, I will I will stay because it's, and, and you know, I'd like to expect the same from other people as well. Like if yeah, Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As, as I say, what is not to love? What is not to love? It's, 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 it's the most wonderful medium comedy. Yeah because it's just joyous 
Um, as has this interview been joyous. I've so much enjoyed chatting to you. Same here. Um, I loved it. Is there, is there anything else before we go you'd like to say? Have you got any podcasts? Are you, are you doing any writing? Have you got any tours or any gigs? Um, or, you know? I'm doing a show. So my, my first work in progress next month, which right. should be called Paranoid. Pa or Paranoid or How I Learn to Stop Worrying and Love the Fear. So <laughs> People I like know. it. <laughs> yeah. the, post, the post is based on Doctor Strange Love. So, <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I've got that. But no, uh, and Comedy Junkies is a night that I run. So Comedy Junkies live on Instagram. Uh, yeah. Which will be an honoured guest at the next one. I'll send you a Well, thank you so much. I'll definitely be there. What's your um, social media handles? So uh, Star, Holtz and Fires. Right. That's great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> For your time. Thank you. It's been an absolute joy. And as I say, um, I will definitely come and see you. And thank you so much for the invite because I'm looking Thanks forward to seeing a great night or with all featuring all of you instead of just 20 minutes or so. You know, yeah. that, that's so, it'll be so good. Thank you so much for your time and all the very best to you. Cheers, Andrew. Thanks, Thanks Richard. Thanks now. Bye bye. bye.